Well, hello, and may God bless each and every one of you. This is James Friedman, and I want to welcome you to Wednesday evening Bible study with James Friedman. Welcome to our Bible study group, and I, I am so grateful to each and every one of you for your commitment and your dedication to the study of the Word of God. The scripture is so, uh, gives such clarity on the importance of the Word, saying that heaven and earth will pass away. Word of God passes away. Apostle Paul told the son of the gospel Timothy to study to show himself approved. Husband under God, need him not be ashamed, be able to divide the word of God. You know, November in the church that I am so honored, humbled, and blessed to serve as pastor at this point. Every November is our steward month. And, uh, the Holy Spirit just placed on my heart to deal with stewardship month of November very important subject, very important topic. So for the month of November, I would like to share with you, yes, you, on the subject of the importance of stewardship. Now, this is going to be broken up into three different lessons, maybe four, but definitely three throughout the month of November. I'll be bringing these Bible studies to you every Wednesday around this time at between 6 and 6.30 every Wednesday from YouTube, but on all the various social media platforms. Your email address, I will be sending, emailing you the link to this Bible study. If I do not have your email address, but all you need to do is go to www.fbcofeastpoint.org. Once again, that's www.fbcofeastpoint.org. Share your email address with us. And we'll put you on the list, and every week you'll get an updated study guide for this Bible study, subsequent Bible studies, your word. So hopefully you've been blessed week out of with you, and we're going to dive right into the for tonight. I'm going to ask you if we take a moment to just spend in prayer, and then we're going to go right into the word of God. The importance of stewardship. Our heads, if you're able. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I come up from your presence. Thank you. Thank you for your word. The blessed script we call the Bible, the blessed script, under the unction of the Holy Spirit by men, your disciples. Father, we're going to deal with this subject. Uh, you have given it to me. I will share with them on the importance of stewardship. We're just so grateful for everyone for their dedication and commitment. Thank you for being with us throughout this Bible study on this evening. Love you, we appreciate you, and we say thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All righty. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to get something to write with, and I need you to get something to write on. Once again, something to write with and something to write on. And guess what else I need you to grab? I need you to grab your Bibles. Amen. If you're watching it right now, or if you're watching this Bible study later on, have those three things with you. It is so important. That you have your own Bible study and understand uh, the scriptures and read those scriptures that are being shed so that shared so that you can have the understanding of the word of the Lord. Amen. So let's dive right into the scriptures on today. Our foundation scripture of this very uh, imperative subject, the importance of stewardship, part one, uh, will be coming from 1 Corinthians 4, 1 and 2. Again, that's 1 Corinthians Four, first and the second verse. I'm reading of the King James Version. As Paul was writing to the church of Corinth, he made this statement. He said, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So this is not the first time we've seen this word steward, stewards in the word of God. But I felt led to start here simply because of the complexity, but the simplicity of what the, of the Apostle Paul is writing to in his first letter to the Corinthian church. So point number one, the Apostle Paul states in his first letter to the church of Corinth three very, very important details as he's leading up into stewardship. Number one. He says the recognition of being ministers, which really is defined as servants of 
Christ. Number one, out of point one, is the recognition, as Paul is writing, of being ministers of Christ. Now, the reason why I believe this is so important is we're talking about stewardship. When we look at the, uh, the rudimentary definition or concept of the word ministers, that word could easily be defined as ministers serve, ministers lead, but they lead as servants. And this is very, very important. Uh, as we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and in the congregational church, we have so many various titles that people have, but no matter what your title is, if that title falls up into minister or ministry, then that is either service or a servant of who? Jesus Christ. Now, number two, of point one is the realism that as ministers, servants of Christ, there is also the responsibility of being stewards. Now, we're going to get real deep into the definition of stewards, but I want to give you two aspects of that word steward and what being a steward really means. Normally, throughout uh, my learning of the scriptures or being in Bible study or listening to other ministers talk about what it is to be a steward, I would always hear that a steward was a manager, someone that managed something. But being a steward, based on my study of the Word of God, goes even deeper. It's not just management. It is being a trustee or an administrator. That's what a steward is, a trustee or administrator, as the Apostle Paul said, of the mysteries of God. What are the mysteries of God? It is the spiritual truths known only by revelation. They are things that were once hidden, but now have been revealed to God's people. That's a wonderful definition that comes from churchofjesuschrist.org. Uh, let me read that again. Mysteries of God are the spiritual truths known only by revelation. They are the things that were once hidden, but now have been revealed to God's people people. I want to share this with you and be very clear. It is the will of God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that as disciples, we are we understand his mysteries or his spiritual truths. I want to say that one more time. It is the will of God through Jesus Christ that as disciples of Jesus Christ, we understand his mysteries or the mysteries of God, the spiritual truths of God. I want to bag that up, and I want you to write the scripture down, uh, the scriptures down out of Matthew 13, 9 through 16, because I, I, I hear so many today, and, and when they speak about the spiritual truths of God, or the will of God, or the mysteries of God, they speak it to the degree that God's people are somehow incapable of understanding the spiritual truths that come from the Lord. God speaks through his word, thereby speaking to all of us. Now, the role of a minister is very, and preacher as a servant is very important. How can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach or they preach unless they have been sent? I understand that. I've been a minister, a preacher, a pastor for over 30 years and a minister for almost 40. So I get my role and my goal and what I am called to do. However, the mysteries of God is meant for all disciples of Jesus Christ. Not just to one man or one woman, uh, but it's, it's open for everyone. That's why I hear ministers that preach, you, you can't handle this right now. Well, no, they can't handle it. Why? Because they're disciples of Jesus Christ. And God, in his love as our heavenly Father, all of our Father, he wants us to understand his mystery. So Matthew 13, 9 and 16 of the King James Version says this, who have ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Jesus is speaking to the disciples at that time. He said, thereby speaking to us, because it is given unto you to know, listen to this, the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. To, to who? Non-disciples. It is not given yet. For whosoever have to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whoever whosoever have not from him shall be taken away, 
even that he have. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seen, see not, and hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. The scripture talks about this uh, in another passage of scripture. The light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehend. Fifteen verse of this verse of chapter says, For this people's heart, here's why they can't see, here's why they can't hear, even though they see it, and even though they hear, but this is why they can't hear or understand or, or, or even receive the mystery, spiritual truths of God. Here we go. It says, for this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart and shall be converted, I should heal them. But blessed, he's talking to his disciples now, but blessed are your eyes for they see, hallelujah, and your ears for they hear. Uh, our prayers as disciples of Jesus Christ, Christians as the, uh, those who are Christ-like, our prayer should be, Lord, let me always be able to hear your word, to understand your mysteries, to understand what you're saying. As I was preaching Sunday, to our church, FBC of East Point, a uh, song years ago that was written by a wonderful gospel artist named Larnell Harris. Uh, uh, I miss my time with you. It's a beautiful song. These moments together, Lord, so just speak. And let me be able to hear and understand what you are saying. Donnie McClurk wrote, wrote that beautiful song when he said, speak to my heart, Lord. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, I don't know what to do. Beautiful song. Uh, we always need to be in a place where we can see and hear the things, the mysteries, the spiritual truths of God. Jesus put it this way. My sheep, he said this, my sheep hear my voice and another they will not follow. Mark 4 and 11 of the King James Version, it says this. And he said, who? Jesus said unto them, unto you, who is you? The disciples of Jesus Christ. That's who that is. It was them. It is us now. And it is the future disciples of Jesus Christ that are yet, not yet born or converted. He says, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to, to them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Wow. So it is God's will, point number one, us to understand his mysteries. Now, point three of point one is this, as Paul was writing. Paul made this statement, the requirement that a steward, a trustee or an administrator be faithful. That is an important word. In the Bible, faithfulness is highly valued and refers to unwavering loyalty, trust, and commitment. In this aspect of the term faith, now we know faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, which is the best definition of faith you can ever get, and that's out of Hebrews 11 and 1. But faithfulness, to be faithful in the Bible, faithfulness is highly valued, once again, and refers to unwavering loyalty, trust, and commitment to the things of what? To the things of God. But Paul is saying that one of the attributes of a steward, a trustee, or administrator is to be faithful. And what? Unwavering, loyalty, trust, and commitment. Now, let's break down this term in point number two of the biblical definition of the term stewardship or to be a steward. So, in Bible study tools, it says that the definition of a steward is a manager or overseer of a household, property, or person. A steward is a manager of or overseer of a household, property, or persons. Uh, in Bible definition, it says the responsibility use of resources such as money, time, and talents. Responsibility of a who? Of a steward. Bible Odyssey says 
a person who oversees the possessions or interest of an owner or master, or in another word for that would be employee. Up on the Bible, a person who oversees the possessions or interests of an owner or master. Now, we find in Christianity.com, it goes a little bit deeper when it talks about stewards or stewardship. In its definition, it says, utilizing and managing all resources God provides for the glory, for his glory, and the betterment of his creation. This is so wonderful. Christian stewardship regards the obligation of Christians in managing and utilizing intelligently the gifts that God has given. The Christian steward is not only responsible for the financial blessings provided by God, but also the spiritual gifts that are given through the Holy Spirit. Oh, praise God. So in other words, whatever God has blessed us with, Whatever God has given unto us, whatever God has bestowed to us, whatever God has blessed us with, we are to be good stewards. We are to be loyal. We are to be committed. We are to be dedicated to the things that God has blessed us with. Praise God. That is such a beautiful thing. We are to have unwavering loyalty, trust, and committed, dedicated beyond a thought the things that God has given us. What? For the betterment of the people of God and for the kingdom of God. When we look at synonyms of stewardship or steward, it even takes us even deeper. It means to be a custodian, a keeper, a caregiver, or a guardian of the things of God. You know, I shared with my church, my second son, uh, who uh, deals with the challenge of autism, uh, we are his caregiver. It is our responsibility to take care of him, and to assist him, and to help him because he is unable to do these things for himself. So we have taken on that responsibility of making sure that everything he needs is provided. Years ago, uh, I don't know if some of you remember the old Arthur Treacher's restaurant. Started my actual working career uh, working for Arthur Treacher's uh, restaurant, and I moved up the ranks and finally became uh, a store manager. And as a store manager, I did not own the Arthur Treacher uh, that restaurant. I, I, I was not my it was not my restaurant by ownership, but as the manager, as the caretaker, as the custodian, I was entrusted to run that restaurant like it was mine. And I did. I learned that lesson from a manager that trained me. He ran the store like it was his. And 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 then he taught me to do the same thing. And there was a reason why the store made the money that it made. and was always number one in the various different things because he cared. And watching him, I learned to care and run it like it was mine. Not the attitude, well, you know, I don't own this, so I don't really care about it. But as the custodian, guardian, caretaker, steward of that restaurant, I ran it was like my, like it was my own. So as a steward of the things of God, we have to look at that the God has invested in me. God has honored me with gifts, with the finances, with uh, the ability. Uh, God has blessed me with the time. Time is a wonderful, beautiful gift. And we're going to talk about that uh, in a subsequently. God has blessed every one of us with the same 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What are we doing as stewardship, stewards with the time that God has blessed us with? So all these things, the wonderful, beautiful things that God has given us, he's given those things to us for us to be a blessing to his people, for us to be a blessing to the kingdom of God, thereby us being blessed because we're a blessing to others. Now, point number three of this lesson, Lesson number one, I want to share you share with you that stewardship was God's original plan for man in the very beginning. When God created heaven and earth, and when God created man, he created man to be a steward over his creation. He cre I'm going to say that one more time, but let me say that one more again. He created you and I to be a steward over his creation. Let me show that. Let me prove that to you. Uh, in Genesis 1, 26, in 30 through 31, it says this, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, 
and let them have dominion over the fish. I'll explain to them in a second. Have dominion over the fish and of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing uh, that creepeth upon the earth. So we're beginning to see stewardship coming out in the book of beginnings, which is the book of Genesis. And let them have dominion over, in other words, over everything God is creating. Uh, God said, I'm giving mankind, I'm giving man dominion over it. I'm giving him stewardship, hallelujah, over what I have created. And I'm looking for him to be committed, dedicated, unwavering faithfulness to the things that I have given unto him. 27th verse of Genesis 1 says, so God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. So when I just read to you and says, and let them have dominion, this is who he was talking about. He was talking about the male man and female man, the, 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 the woman and the man, one man and man. He created them to have dominion, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, listen to this, stewardship here, <clears throat> be fruitful and multiply, okay? And replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea. He, he's repeating himself here. He, he's really ramming home uh, the importance of the stewardship and exactly what he wants them to do as stewards, <coughs> excuse me, and over the fowl of, of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every uh, herb-bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree and the, which is fruit of the tree yielding seed, to you it shall be meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth, creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Praise the Lord. So here, God is revealing his heart, his mind. And his expectations for us, mankind, both male and female, to have dominion, stewardship over everything that he had created. Praise the Lord. And guess what? That stewardship has not ended. God still expect us, expects us to be good stewards over everything that he has blessed us with. Amen. So this is lesson one of this three-part series that we're going to be dealing with, or four-part, on the importance of stewardship. I hope you were blessed by it. I hope in this study you begin to evaluate your life, evaluate the things that God has given you and blessed you with, and, and ask yourself the honest question that only you can really answer. Um, am I or have I? been a good steward with the things that God has given me. Every morning have I have I woken up and said, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. At the end of the day, can I pray in my prayers and say, Lord, I want to thank you that I've exhausted every second of this day, that I have done with this day what you purposed for me to do in my life. Or Lord, have I wasted? Uh, we have so many distractions, so many different things in this day and time country that distracts us from doing the things that God has blessed us with and being a good steward of the things that God has to us. I thank God for technology and the advancement of technology. It is a beautiful thing, but it can be a hindrance and a deterrence and a distraction as we are looking at what God, <coughs> excuse me, this is what happens when you teach all day. Voice gets a little scratchy. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Please forgive me. Lord, am I doing the right thing with what you bless me with? Hope again. Hope you're blessed by this uh, this lesson tonight. I know you are. And please plan on tuning in every Wednesday as we continue on with this lesson. I thank God for you. Thank you for taking time out your schedule to watch with uh, share in our Bible study and be part of our Bible study group. I want to say to you this out there. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, I want you to bow your heads with me just briefly. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I come before your presence. Thank you, Lord God, that someone shared this video with me or found it on social media or on, on the various social media sites. And I've been blessed by this tonight. And Father, I want to give my life to you. I want to be a good steward of what you, that you have blessed me with, Lord. Morning, mighty Ben, I've never received you as my Lord and Savior. Or my testimony may be, Lord, I did years ago. Life got in the way. I got distracted and detoured. I found myself drifting away from you, but I'm ready to come back home. Father, I believe that you are my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you died on Calvary's cross for my sins. I believe that you rose again on the third day with all power in your hand. I believe that you now sit on the right hand of God, my Father, as a justifiable grave. Father, I ask that you forgive me for all of my sins. And as I learned what sin is, I will cease and cease those things. <coughs> Lord, receive me as one of your sons. And I begin my life today as a Christian, as a disciple of you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made that prayer, I would love to hear from you. If you have not been baptized in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at our church, come on. Set aside time for baptism. We would love for you to be baptized in the name of Jesus. If you're looking for a church home, please feel free to come and visit us. At church Baptist Church of East Point, as we affectionately call it, FBC of East Point, located at 16428 East Timeline Road in the city of East Point, Ratchet Avenue. And Kelly Road. Our adult Sunday school classes start every Sunday at 945. Our Sunday morning fellowship service starts at 11 o'clock. And also at 11 o'clock, we have our children's church for children anywhere between ages of 4 and 12. If you're looking for a church full of love, full of the spirit of the Lord, full of the uh, Holy Ghost, full of prayer, and, and, and just full of, uh, full of the word, then come and be love to have you. If there's a Bible question that's Burning in your heart, burning in your heart, and you would like that Bible question to be answered, and I invite you to send your Bible questions to the website that I gave earlier, www.fbcofeastpoint.org, or you can email your Bible questions to fbc at gmail.com. Uh, Once again, that's fbcofeastpoint at gmail.com, and I would be more than happy to answer whatever Bible question that you may have. But look, God bless you. You may have a smile. Have a beautiful week, and I look forward to seeing you again on next Wednesday as we continue on the importance of stewardship. God bless you, and I love you. In Jesus' name.